What's the best cooler for your gaming PC? There are just so many options. Air or water, massive or minuscule, cheap or blimmin' expensive. And what does best mean anyway? Every PC is completely different. Surely you're not gonna strap a 200 pound CPU cooler on a 500 pound PC, are you? Are you? In this video, we're gonna walk you through the ins and outs of PC cooling and help you to find the perfect cooler for you, no matter the build nor the budget. But not only that, we also have a truly monumental giveaway taking place because the lovely guys over at Corsair and CyberPower PC are sponsoring this video and they're actually putting this up for grabs, which is a bit sad because it means I can't keep it. Hi, CyberPower, is there any chance that I can actually enter and win the competition? That's not good news. All jokes aside, make sure that you watch the end of this video to learn how to enter. But back to the topic of this video, PC cooling. What is it? Why do you need it? And ultimately, doesn't it come with your PC when you buy one? Well, the good news is yes, but also sort of no. If you want to access a more budget-friendly system, then in most cases, cases, I love that joke, you're probably not gonna have to invest much, if anything at all, in PC cooling. In a nutshell, when you fire up a game and you really start stressing out some components, then they start to generate heat, because the more power that you put into a component, the harder it works, then the more heat is generated as a waste product. The greater the heat output, the more cooling is required to actually stop our components from overheating and to safely vent it out of the back of our system. As a general rule of thumb, components can hit around about 100 degrees before they actively start to fail, but this does vary from part to part, and almost every new component sold will have fail safes to stop them from ever reaching this. This is why you've probably heard the term base and boost clock when you're looking at graphics cards and CPUs, because these days they're all dynamic. The better the cooling, the faster the component can run, and the faster it runs, the better your performance will be. In a typical gaming PC, the hottest components will be the GPU and the CPU, and they require some kind of active cooling, but voltage regulation modules, or VRMs, and the motherboard chipsets also need some sort of help dissipating the heat. This is usually more of a passive approach though, as as you can see on this Z690 motherboard, there's a lot of thermal mass here, which helps to increase the surface area and helps to draw all of the heat away from those components, which will then be naturally vented by your case fans. Again, it's all down to the power that's consumed by the component, which is exactly why you'll see budget-friendly motherboards look a little bit bare, while the big, beefy, overclocking-friendly motherboards come with stacks of bulky heat sinks. Ultimately, they're designed to deal with larger loads. But okay, Centric, I understand all of that. You know what, I don't care. I came here for CPU cooling. Are you gonna tell me or what? I mean, firstly, there's no need to be rude about it. But secondly, yes. Yes, I am. In a nutshell, you have four options, and the first one is actually free. When you're buying a more modest processor, you're probably gonna be given a cooler right in the box. This has almost guaranteed compatibility with the case that you're using, and has more than enough grunt to stop your PC from overheating, and of course, as we've said, it's completely free. These things are absolutely brilliant for beginners, or pretty much anyone that wants to save some money. However, there are some problems. Not just that I can't get it out of the box either. Firstly, and probably most obviously, they just look a little bit pants. These are not exactly uh, the most attractive units out there. I think the Ryzen one is a fair bit better than the Intel, but both of them don't exactly scream quality now, do they? The more drastic issues, however, are actually all about the performance, as ultimately something this small is gonna have some limitations, especially this. Look, look at the difference, that is actually pretty mad. Buying an entry-level chip? Well, you probably hit around about 60 degrees under load, which, to be honest, is great. But for something more substantial, you could easily push into the high 80s, and that is a little bit too close for comfort. After all, higher temperatures can lead to shorter lifespans. Oh, and if you're feeling a little bit adventurous and you fancy doing some overclocking, with a stock cooler, you've almost certainly got no chance at all. But that absolutely pales in comparison to the big issue. Noise. 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 NOISE! These things are just so loud. I mean, you can't blame them. I mean, look at the size of the fan and the heatsink. There's not really that much more it can do other than spin faster. But ultimately, this is unpleasant, and it's not really what you want your gaming PC to be, especially if you're spending a lot of money on components. The good news is that the solution is very simple. It's to grab yourself an aftermarket cooler and get something that looks, sounds, and performs a whole lot better. It's a lot cooler. You have three main ways to go about this. You can get yourself a bigger air cooler, you can grab an all-in-one liquid cooler, or for the best of the best, you can create your very own custom loop. Or, you know, get CyberPower PC to build one for you. Which is a lot quicker and easier, let me tell you that. Larger air coolers are great, and again, I'm a big fan of them. 
Oh, why do you watch my videos? As they can perform so much better than the stock options, but they don't cost huge sums of money, and they can usually be installed very quickly and simply. This Corsair A500, for instance, just sits atop the CPU socket, and then it fixes down into place before the fans slide in aside the heatsink. Because of its larger mass, more heat can actually be absorbed into the cooler. It's quite clever the way it works. You've got this CPU block on the bottom. It takes in the heat from the CPU, goes up through these heat pipes, and then it's dispersed into this very large fin array. And this in turn increases the surface area, which is when the fans come in, do their job, and then the air is exhausted out of the back of the chassis. As you'd expect, there are some downsides, twofold mainly. Firstly, the size. This ain't small. This means that if you do want to do an ITX or Micro ATX build, then you're probably going to be quite limited in terms of options. And remember, with air coolers, the larger the size, generally speaking, the better the performance. The second downside? Well, this one is a little bit more subjective, and that's all about looks. And I would argue that generally speaking, something huge like this isn't as attractive as an all-in-one, or certainly something like a custom loop. There's nothing wrong with it, and I think that the A500 does actually look pretty clean, but a lot of coolers look a little bit more like that. They don't have a top plate. And I think for a lot of people, this probably isn't the look that you'd want to go for. I personally do like them, but I can understand if this isn't really your cup of tea. These are just some of the reasons why every company under the sun is now bringing out all-in-one liquid coolers, and boy are they popular. It's a simple science that water is a great conductor of heat, and by creating a flow of liquid all around your system, you can move the heat away from the CPU quickly and quietly. They look something along the lines of this, and as you can see, all of the radiators and tubing are pre-filled. You don't need to worry about adding liquid to a loop, and you get radiators in different sizes so you can get the best performance for your chassis, or if you're trying to save money or go all out, so you have plenty of options available. The liquid pump is baked straight into the CPU block, so all you need to do is fit the head unit and then mount the radiator somewhere in your chassis. It looks super clean and tidy, and with 120mm coolers available, even ITX builds can get in on the fun. Not only this, but Corsair now even sell a liquid cooler with a freaking screen on it. Talk about utility. The pros? Visuals and performance. These things always look absolutely sick, as the kids would say. Maybe they've been staring at RGB for too long. No, for real, they almost certainly always look amazing. You've got RGB fans, you've got pump head units that can be super attractive. But for me, it's just the fact that it always gives you that very clean and tidy look. And then in terms of performance, you can actually get very similar results between something as huge as this and something relatively as small as this. Obviously, it is going to depend on the air cooler and the size of the radiator that you're going for. Don't forget, of course, that the performance is going to vary depending on the CPU that you're actually cooling. Something like this, which is a 5950X, is definitely going to need something substantial to keep it cool and to have low noise levels and ultimately something that performs as you'd expect. But if you're going to go for something more like this, which is the i5-11400F, then to be honest, even both of these options are probably going to be overkill. So do your research before you buy. The main downsides to all-in-one coolers are usually money related. You can get cheap ones, but nothing really close to entry-level prices. People also used to complain about pump noise, but there's not really anything significant these days. Instead, they just can be a little bit tricky to fit sometimes. Not hard, just a little bit annoying. Which leads us to our final option, custom cooling. Definitely the most, uh, Hardcore out there, but certainly the most rewarding. Put simply, this just looks the business, doesn't it? Full custom loop, hardline tubing, clean bins, RGB shine, bang, it is awesome. This is easily the best performing consumer solution hands down, with my personal rig rocking an overclocked oven-like i9-10980XE CPU, yet it never exceeds 62 degrees when I'm exporting these videos. The rig we have here, however, goes even further than my own with a dual custom loop setup courtesy of Corsair Hydrox fittings, blocks and radiators. This means that not only is there water flowing all around the graphics card and the processor, but there's a full custom loop for each, so the systems have their own isolated system. This gives you a stupidly good looking PC, distracting almost, but the thing for me that I just love about custom loops is how quiet they are. This hasn't been tuned at all, this was out of the box for me, and... And the crazy thing is, 
This is actually how my PC is when I'm gaming or when I'm rendering or anything like that because the temperature doesn't actually change dramatically enough that your fans ever really need to spin up really loud. They can just take care of the loop by themselves for pretty much silent operation. I think it's fair to say that CyberPower did a better job than I did when I tried hardlining earlier this year. If you want to see that video, it's in the top right corner of your screen, by the way. But that's just it. Building your own loop is hard and it's risky. It takes a proper level of commitment to do this. Even with soft tubing, okay, it's not too bad, but there's still water flowing around your system. This is why I don't blame you at all if you do want to get a system builder like CyberPower to actually do it for you, as you'll get all of the perks of custom cooling, but without the risk or the project time. But of course, this isn't going to save you from the worst thing about custom cooling, the price the cost. To actually put all of this together is not going to be cheap. Not only do you need to build a gaming PC, but you then need to start thinking about blocks, radiators, pumps, and even individually, they're not cheap. There's also going to be quite a bit of a mess around the back when it comes to cables to clear up, but I suppose nothing a bit of TLC can't fix. So then, where does all of this leave us? What is going to be the best option? Well, as you probably guessed, there is no best option. It's about what the best option is for you. And we've touched on it a little bit already. Depending on the CPU you go for, and I guess the gaming PC that you're buying, is going to change completely what is going to be the right solution. Because while custom cooling can be done to pretty much any sort of system, it's very expensive, it's super top end. So chances are you're going to be picking between one of these three, and my advice is to get rid of this as quickly as possible. However, if you are going for a proper budget gaming PC, to be honest, just use it for a bit and then upgrade it later, because ultimately there's no point taking money away from, say, like a CPU or a graphics card just to get a cooler when you can use the free one that comes in the box. It should also be noted that if you are going to swap out a CPU cooler, you will need some of this, which is some thermal compound, because while a lot of coolers will actually come with some pre-applied, they sort of put it on the base for you. If you are gonna change things over, you need to remove the old one and add some new stuff. Whenever you're choosing between an air cooler or an all-in-one, my honest advice is just not to be afraid of either and let pricing help your decision. A good all-in-one usually comes with around about a 30 to 40 pound price premium, but the visuals often win people over and make it worth that extra cost. Most of the budget builds that I've done on this channel usually do use air coolers, and the reason is because they are just a fair bit cheaper, and for the sort of CPU that you're going to be using it with, you don't need an all-in-one, it's overkill. But when you start looking at PCs that cost a thousand dollars or more, you're probably going to be given the option between a big cooler and an all-in-one. I'd argue that the all-in-one will look a bit better, but ultimately it's up to you and what you want to have in your PC. And then last, but certainly not least, we have our custom loop. It's not necessarily as difficult as people think, but it is very time consuming and the element of risk is real. I wouldn't say it's as high as people think, but obviously if you do it wrong, water can go splashing around your system, probably not gonna be a good idea. But with great risk comes great reward. Because for me personally, I can't really see me not doing custom loops going forward. I'm actually gonna be putting together my own new personal rig for the new year. Get subscribed if you're not ready to see that. There's something about having a PC like this that I know it's a seven deadly sin, but fills you with pride. If you want to learn a little bit more about CyberPower PC, air cooling, all-in-ones, or full-blown custom loops, then of course check out all of the links down below to get yourself started. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to enter the biggest competition I think I've ever had on this channel, the chance to win this very system. Now, due to logistics, I think you'll agree this is not very easy to ship and thus it is UK only. I'm sorry, there will be some global ones very shortly, don't you worry. If you're in the UK, just head down to the description below, follow the link and all of the terms and conditions are there and you can enter. Smash that like button, get yourself subscribed and I'll catch you in the next one.